Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Light aircraft manufacturer, the Airplane Factory, delivered its 200th airplane in June, having started production of its light and light sport aircraft in August 2010. Jonathan Roden tells us more. The South African market has proven to be patriotic as buyers are enthusiastic about buying local products. This is especially evident when buying airplanes as it enables customers to visit the factory and engage directly with the producer. The Airplane Factory co-founder and director, James Pittman, tells us how the company started. So I'm James Pittman from the Airplane Factory, and this is a business that myself and Mike Blind started in 2005 in Edenvale here, just in the east of Johannesburg. And we started developing a light sport aircraft on the back of a gap that we saw in the market. Essentially, in order to try and facilitate people flying, regulatory changes were made that um, simplified the certification standards for aeroplanes and also the, um, it simplified the license requirements to fly aeroplanes and the medical requirements in order to get a pilot license. So we saw this kind of opportunity coming in the market. It took us three and a half years to get our first prototype, what we call our development prototype aeroplane flying. And we learned a hang of a lot during the three year process about how to make a semi-monocoque aluminium aeroplane. Got a lot of advice from guys who had been in arms school in Denel previously, from Aerosuit and some other engineers, but it would have been nice to have had more expertise in this country. It took us quite a bit longer than it should have to get our first prototype aeroplane flying. I can still remember that aeroplane flew on the 18th of October 2008 and we eventually flew that aeroplane for, for 42 hours, tested it, changed quite a number of things, you know, um, changed the size of the vertical stabilizer, the hinge points on the ailerons, um, we changed slightly the positioning of the mass in the aircraft, quite a, quite a number of engineering changes between the development prototype aeroplane and what ultimately we call the production prototype aeroplane. Before commercial production of the Sling 2 started in 2010, Pittman and the airplane factory director and co-founder Mike Blythe circumnavigated the world in the Sling 2 production prototype during July and August 2009. Pittman explains the pair's trip around the world. We wanted to take our production aeroplane to Oshkosh, Wisconsin, the world's biggest air show in the States. It happens during July each year and in its heyday, a million people visited Oshkosh during the week of that air show. In these times of global recession, it's come down to about 400,000 people. But I believe that this year, it was last week, I believe they're up to in, in excess of half a million guys again. So in July 2009, we built our production prototype aeroplane. On the back of the testing that we've done on our development prototype, put the plane together in six weeks, and only seven days after that aeroplane's first flight, Mike and I took off to demonstrate our faith in our baby, to fly her across the Atlantic Ocean to, um, to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. The flight across the Atlantic, incidentally, was the longest flight ever in an aircraft of that size at that time. It took us 22 hours to fly from Conakry in Guinea to Belém in Brazil. We showed the plane in Oshkosh, and for the hell of it, because we love adventure, we actually returned by flying around the world. We kept going west. It took us 40 days to get back to South Africa. And when we returned, we were satisfied that the aeroplane had proved itself to the level required to go into production for a saleable product. Other news making headlines this week, the integrated energy plan should prioritize renewables and a prototype high lift crane receives positive feedback. Energy policy expert Richard Worthington says that any long-term energy plan should prioritize the deployment of renewable energy technologies in the short term. It's been suggested that for, for energy base load, electricity supply, there are certain things that need to be done. None of that actually stops us growing renewables as fast as we possibly can because we're growing from such a small base. So the question 
that I would like um, the IEP to be looking at is how quickly could we grow renewables if we were decisive, if we were committed, and if we wanted to realize the job creation potential which requires that we localize a lot. Multinational engineering company Condra is receiving positive feedback on the testing of its prototype high-speed, high-lift crane technology, which is designed and manufactured for fast-tracking the precinct phase of new mine shafts. With the development of the new machine, I think the mining industry's got something as a tool that would make it easier for them to go through the pre-sinking process. And uh, yeah, it should make it a lot easier for them. And I think with the developments in the mining industry of late, everybody that's looking to develop a shaft obviously wants to realize the actual mining faster to, to get hold of their investment a lot quicker. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.